Let's see if we can go undefeated with this list. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to some gameplay. This is our first gameplay of 2022. It is extraordinarily exciting to be back. I am so happy. I hope everybody had a fantastic holiday, got to see some family maybe, uh, enjoyed the break. Uh, I know we didn't do any kind of content really over the last couple weeks until yesterday where we announced our giveaway. So uh, please go check that giveaway out if you would like. We are giving away an entire draft booster box of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. That is huge. Uh, we normally don't give away the full booster boxes. We usually only do bundles. So this is a really, really big deal for us. So we're really excited about it. And we're happy to be giving back a little bit more this time around, but we're gonna jump in. We're just gonna have a good time. We're gonna hang out. We're gonna have some fun. And we're starting kind of chill uh, with some historic brawl. Uh, this is a format that we jumped into a little bit last year, but I'd like to kind of make a point of giving it more of a, a true shot this year. Um, and then start building kind of my own uh, lists and things like that. So we are starting off with just kind of a, a gruel good stuff list. This is Domery Chaos Bringer. Uh, just a nice little planeswalker allows us to gain a little bit of mana, fill up our hand, or kind of throw out some beasts with that emblem. And the idea is very simply just basically ramp into some big stuff. We've got we've got a lot of big stuff in this one. So uh, really, that's there's really not a ton of strategy to it. Uh, I'll be honest, it, at least it doesn't seem like it. Um, this is one of the top ish lists in the format, though. So I thought I would give it a shot. And it's not one that I've played yet. So I'm kind of curious to see how it goes. But yeah, I mean, there's a, some sub themes that we'll see as we go throughout a little bit of an elf sub theme, maybe even a werewolf sub theme. But other than that, it's kind of just play out as much big stuff as you can, have some fun with it, and hope you win. So we're going to give that a shot, guys. Hopefully it's a good time. Hopefully we get some wins. We're just going to hang out and play for a little while. So let's jump into game one right now. Here we go, guys. Our first game of 2022. Uh, and I'm not sold on this hand, I'll be honest. Uh, it doesn't seem that strong. It does have a three into some four mana stuff, uh, in particular the Sundering, but... I think I'm going to send this one back. We're going to see what else we can get. I think this is a little better. We've got a bit more ramp, uh, which is going to help us. So I feel like this is worth keeping. Um, and I guess we probably try and keep the ambush, right? Uh, that just seems good. Yeah, uh, let's go ahead. We'll throw this out since it does come into play tapped. We, we do want to get that green source down uh, so we can get to that colony ambush and fight off this little guy. Uh, which might be a bit of a problem for us. So let's do this. Blast Zone can also help take care of these little guys, so that could also be a uh, benefit there. Um, but this is going to help get us towards where we need to be. Next turn, we can just drop Domri if we'd like. Uh, that doesn't necessarily seem great, though, against this. Uh, very nice little combo here from the opponent. All right, what do we need to do? So we can do this. Um, truth be told, we can just put a blast counter on this, uh, which doesn't actually seem that bad. Um, I think we're gonna take that. We're gonna put one blast counter here. What this allows us to do is basically just blow all of this stuff up at some point. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna choose land, we definitely need a land. Perfect. All right. I like that. That's pretty good. I'm trying to play smarter here um, against these little two card combos. We've got two counters here, so this is going to be able to blow up both of these uh, if we need it to. Um, I'd really rather not have to, but I think that's just kind of the direction that we're going to end up having to go here. Um, wow. OK, cool. So they are going to attack with all three. That is going to kill this, but of course they just get another one. Um, but that's actually kind of okay. So here's that other one coming down. We'll play that Castle Embrith. Um, all right. Now we've got some options. 
I do honestly still think the safe play is just the blast zone though. Um, we do have to sacrifice it. I guess that is kind of a bit of a, a bit of a problem for us though. Uh, let's see. Um, hmm. Let's throw out the gold span dragon here. I want to say no attacks. I kind of want to see if they uh, target this. Now I have to wonder. Okay, so this is the the arch in it, or is it the alchemy rules? That's it. So it doesn't have the if it's targeted ability, which is kind of annoying, but that's fine. All right. Curious to see though what they can do because I mean we do just get to freely block here unless they kill this, um, which they may or may not be able to do. But I'd like to get this down so that way uh, we can start creating those treasure tokens and then utilize that mana next turn to to play something else. So we'll see how this goes. Okay. So they do continuously just get to draw some cards here two cards in fact uh with these which is very cool uh but eventually this i mean the end result is eventually they die from that so it's kind of interesting but we'll see uh and of course we do have that blast in so that's quite nice um hmm. helpful okay we can play that drop a treasure token that gives us three mana um we do have the Colony Ambush as well. Let's see, how do we want to do this? We've got some options here, so I'm, I'm trying to think through this as best we can. Um, hmm. This also seems quite good, just in the sense that it would help us uh, later on, but I think what I'm going to do is this. Uh, we can only use this to cast a creature spell, though, I suppose, so let's do this. Um, hmm. I'm gonna take this. Hexproof from black seems pretty useful. Um, we will attack in here. It's gonna give us enough to uh, play the Harbinger. Let's go ahead and do that. Hexproof from black seems quite good. I'm still going to leave up that ambush here for potentially next turn. Uh, that just seems really useful. And this Garrick's Harbinger really helps shut down what they're trying to do. Now, obviously, they can still sweep, but Hexproof from black is pretty useful. Okay. Let's see. Sure. Now, prefer this permanent can't be the target of Black Spill. Yeah, so this can still die uh, to these. So the trick is, how do we want to do this? Um, I'm going to say no blocks. We're going to let Dembry go down here. That's perfectly fine. Uh, yes, I'll take that action. That's going to die, which is going to draw them now three cards, which is pretty good. I think it might be Blast Zone time. We can also just blow this up with the Colony Ambush, which is pretty useful. I'd like to draw a land, honestly. <laughs> a land would be great. Um, hmm. <laughs> so they can create a little 1-1 one -one as well. That's fine. Tavern Swindler. Okay. So they did. They got the little 1-1. One, one. That's annoying, but okay. Um, two, three. Again, we're kind of tying up so much of our mana, it's a little annoying. But I think we can make this work. Um, because we do have the gold span dragon, I think we'll have the ability to do something here. And the land helps, so that's good. Alright, so first things first. Uh, let's do this. We're going to blow up all the two mana stuff. Which unfortunately is our own little uh, guy, but I think that's okay. They're going to draw a lot of cards here. Uh, and lose a lot of life, though, crucially. Let's resolve all we don't need to. Awesome. Okay. 
Uh, and... I'm gonna attack him with all of this. Um, let's see how this goes. So they can block here, which is fine, but I believe they can block here, yeah. Cool. All right, we got this then. Oh, even better. Um, okay, so let's let that hit. Um, we're gonna drop this. We're gonna blow this up. We don't want them to be able to copy this, so we're gonna go ahead and take that one out. Um, and that just makes this a basic 2-2 two -two decayed zombie. It's nothing special, so. We'll see. Um, we have the Terror of the Peaks play at some point here, which is kind of nice because it's just a zap for some damage at some point if we could play another creature. So I kind of like that. I'd like to have the Wandering Archaic down uh, just because it kind of taxes them a little bit. So if they had any kind of removal, they would have to pay an extra two basically to keep us from from using it as well. The, the benefit, though, is we do have the Harbinger. So. OK. Uh, very good, uh, but again, probably not enough, I would venture to guess. Uh, we do want to make sure, yeah, we do want to make sure we go ahead and ta or, uh, sacrifice this turn. Remember an attack creature gets it. Okay. So we'll sacrifice one of these, that's fine. It's gonna tap it, so that's the important piece here. Alright. And they just give up? Alright, we did it! Awesome! Game one, we did it. Uh, it was a little sketchy, a little touch and go, but we finally got the win. Let's move on to game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and this is an interesting hand, but definitely one that I'm okay to keep, so we're gonna go for it. Uh, we've got the green source, which can get us Gilded Goose or the Shepherd, and then we can kind of go from there. Uh, very curious to see how this game plays out. Uh, we are against a Nicol Bolas list, which is terrifying, um, <laughs> but... We'll see what we can do. Turn one Gilded Goose is pretty much one of the best plays that we can have in the game. It's obviously not perfect, but it is pretty good. Um, hmm. I think we kind of need to do this. Uh, we can let that enter tapped though. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and play this out um, and pass. We're not gonna play the Shepherd quite yet. <clears throat> I would love to get this out, but I don't really wanna use our mana that we've got out at the moment for that. I'd like to wait and get like a Neheb down or maybe even Domri here. Uh, in fact, preferably Domri, I think. Um, just seems better. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this isn't super exciting, but crucially, this is now hitting on a different axis than just a Sweeper, as an example. Uh, which is kind of what we don't want to do. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and get this down. Um, I'll give it haste just so we can get an attack in. Chances are things are going to die in this matchup, uh, and so I'd prefer that we get as much damage in as possible as early as possible. Yep, okay. Um, let's see. That's really helpful. Um... <laughs> That is extremely helpful. Okay, so what we get to do here, drop this, uh, we give it haste, we attack in. Uh, we didn't need to attack with Gilded Goose, but that's fine. Uh, when this deals damage, we get to blow up the Chromatic Lantern. That is huge. Uh, it just makes it a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to deal with what they got going on here, so that's helpful. Uh, and crucially, Domri's getting up there. I mean, we only need one more counter to where we can actually uh, ultimate, so uh, we have hope here. They've got two substantial threats between the Sundering Shaman as well as Domri. They definitely have a lot to think about here. There is Nicol Bolas the Ravager. Absolutely terrifying card. Now we have to decide which one. I think it's this one. Um, yeah, this just spreads out so much. Um, okay, cool. So we're going to do this. Uh, we will add red. We'll go ahead and play this. Give it haste. 
And we're gonna attack in with both of these. Um, yeah. So again, assuming that they may have a sweeper here, but we do at least get, I mean, we're, we're winning next turn if they don't have anything. Uh, and truthfully, even if they, they can attack, but we can block with the Gilded Goose. This does not have trample. Um, we'll, we'll see how this goes. I have high hopes. That's a little scary because now they can attack Domri and, uh, and block. Okay. Sure. Um, but they also are just going to die next turn if they do nothing. So, oh, well, all right then. Um, interesting. Okay. So at the beginning of your end step, create a 4 4 beast token with trample. I think we just do that. Um, that just kind of really, yeah, okay. We got the win, guys. We did it. We're amazing. Game two is a win as well. Let's jump into a game three. Let's see if we can go undefeated with this list. All right, guys, this will be our final game. Uh, and this is a pretty easy keep. We've got some ways to uh, to ramp ourselves here, and we've got a Coglo, which is just going to be great. So uh, definitely an easy keep. We'll lead on the Tapped Land, uh, the Slumber Mound here, and then next turn we can drop either into the north or Mind Stone. Uh, I do think we obviously need to focus on getting green mana out if we've got the Coglo in hand, um, so we'll kind of make that the priority, although that also might change it. Uh, Let's go ahead and drop this for now. Uh, and we'll see what we end up drawing here. Uh, depending on what land we end up getting, if we do draw a land off the top, we might go for either red or green, depending. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, worth noting, Domri obviously also can help us play Kogla uh, and any of our further creatures. This is a Golo stack, so finally we got to see a Golo stack. Uh, we see those pretty regularly, <laughs> in case you haven't... Uh, haven't been playing for very long. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, let's get... It gets onto the battlefield tap. So let's go ahead and get the dual land here. And then we can do this and fetch a green source. Uh, so now we have got basically all the color that we might need on the field, uh, which is fantastic. So. Uh, next turn, we've got Storm's Wrath up, but most likely we'll probably just go for Domri, uh, depending on what the opponent does here. They are one land away from being able to cast Kogla, uh, which is a little scary. Hmm. Okay, uh, so they can actually just steal Kogla now, uh, which is not fun. But we do have the Storm's Wrath, so we can just kill it. Uh, don't love that but it is what it is. Worth noting, Storm's Wrath can't kill Golos uh, just on its own. It's only four damage. So, you know, it's not the end of the world that this is happening. It's annoying for sure, but we can actually refill our hand pretty easily with Domri. So uh, I'm not terribly worried, but it is kind of annoying because Kogla is just very, very good. Um, all right, what do we get? A Paradise Druid. Um, I think I'm gonna go this route. So we're gonna play Domery plus up and Paradise Druid. Uh, not super intimidating by any means, but this is a ramp spell. Uh, it does uh, kind of help us out a little bit here and it does have Hexproof. So crucially, um, they can't just like straight kill it. Uh, yeah, that seems okay. And we'll see what the opponent wants to do. I do understand if we Storm's Wrath, we kill our own Paradise Druid, and we're going to be dealing four to Domri, but I think that's okay. We'll we'll make it work. Uh, oh, interesting. Okay, so they did not play their last color of mana, which is very important because here that just shows that they don't have it in hand. Otherwise, they most likely would have played it for the Golos. So um, they still can play Golos, but they don't have the colors to activate it, which is important very important okay um hmm. okay well now they've got the world tree so uh that makes sense do we just take this out i'm gonna say yes actually uh 
we get Cogla back here, which is really important. So, um, yeah, let's do this. We'll just do for green. We're just gonna play this and fight off. Uh, I'm gonna give it haste. We're gonna fight off the Golos. Perfect. Um, and then we get an attack in. That was so important. Uh, we also get to blow that up, which is nice. All right, cool. That was really useful. <laughs> that was very, very good. I'm glad we blocked. All right. Uh, now, obviously they can replay this at some point, but that's kind of fine. So we're gonna take that action, just bring it back. Uh, we just have this. Oh no! Okay, that's really annoying. I really wish we could give our stuff hexproof, but we can't. Okay. Hmm. Again, this is where the riot from Domri is so good because you can do so much with it. Um, this will only show you that it's on the battlefield or in your graveyard and you control the giant. Okay. I think we go this route. The, the Crasher is very, very good at filling up the, the board here, so I feel like that's the way to go because we kind of just want to spread things out. Maybe that's wrong, I don't know. It's it's also just a stronger threat, uh, and it does have Trample, whereas this is going to deal two damage every time, but that's it. Um, I mean, they can block it here. Uh, I don't know, we'll see. All right. Annoying, uh, but again, not the end of the world. Ooh, Thrag Tusk. Uh, yeah. I do really love a Thrag Tusk. That's just a good card. Uh, yeah, let's throw Thrag Tusk down. It's gonna gain us some life, and then if it dies, we actually just get a 3 3. So, uh, I'm cool with that. Uh, chances are they're gonna have plenty of removal, but they've only got two cards unknown in hand. Uh, and so there is some benefit to this. Um,. Unfortunately, we're having a really hard time drawing land, uh, which is a bit frustrating. Um, but it is what it is. We can't can't do too much about it. We can leave up the heroic intervention, by the way, uh, at some point here that we can kind of deal with this if they decide to block or do anything weird like that. Um, and Storm's Wrath is still an option if we can get like another burn spell, maybe. I don't know. We'll figure something out. Um, Golos is definitely like the most annoying matchup that we have seen. Uh, Golos, if you don't play Historic Brawl very often, uh, Golos is very common, uh, just in general. It's a very good deck, one that I hate playing against, but is very fun to play, so I do understand, um, but it's very annoying. All right, we're gonna hit him for five. We're gonna just play this out. We, we just gotta pressure as much as we can, because chances are they're gonna go off here uh, with this Golos and probably just win it. Um, they get to look at the top three and play them for free. That's scary. Uh, now, worth noting, they did play a land this turn already, which kind of isn't a mistake, but it's just not uh, the best. Oh, okay. So they're not going to do that. Uh, I'm cool with that. They can hit for three, I don't really care about that. Looks like they're not planning to, though. Land. Uh, land is good. That allows us to Domery if we'd like, uh, but I think definitely we just attack first and see what they decide to do. Uh, they may even try and block just so... No, they're not. All right. Uh, just so they could get the land trigger, but it looks like they're not going to. Uh, we can go Clothus. Should we go Clothus? Hmm. It's kind of a guaranteed way to uh, continue this, or we can just Domri. I'm gonna Domri. Um, we're gonna try and uh, minus three here just to fill up our hand a little bit. I think that's the right play. Uh, we want to have options here. Uh, this this does kind of leave us unprotected, which is a bit annoying, and they're going to kill it, but we knew they were going to kill it anyway. Oh no, we froze. Why does this happen? Why does the client suck? No! Uh, Alright, be right back.
Okay, uh, sorry guys, we, uh, for whatever reason, the client just decided to drop out, uh, but we're back, and we didn't really miss anything. Uh, they basically lightning helix the dome re-raid, and we were able to get two creatures here into our hands, so, uh, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> we didn't, uh, lose anything too crazy here, but... We'll see what can happen. Um, there it is, there's the dome reactivation. Wow, okay, Sphinx's rev is actually pretty bad for them. Um, however, this is quite good. Um, they can make us sack the, the Thrag Tusk here, which is decent. It's actually not the end of the world for us though. Um, and if we do, we might be able to kind of get a... Uh... Interesting, okay. Yeah, they played that for zero. Um, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, all right, so this does have Riot. We can jump into this right away. Um, hmm. What's the right play here, though? Got six mana available. Um, hmm. We can do this. All right, first things first. I'm gonna attack the Lily. Let's we'll see what they do. I assume they just block here? Yeah, okay. That's fine. Uh, that's gonna kill that, which is good. They do draw a card off of this, which is annoying, but not the end of the world. Uh, all right. Ravager Worm can come in. Um, we can drop a counter on it and then fight. So we do this, uh, and then fight this. So that gets Golos off the field. Um, now obviously they've got plenty of land here, they could probably, I guess, just replay it, but um, now the only thing we have to worry about is the Lily, which if they minus four, we actually Storm's Wrath it and it just dies. Or truth be told, we just attack it with the Thrag Tusk uh, token, and it dies. So, no matter what, we can kill Lily here. Um, Thrag Tusk is so good, by the way. You don't know, Thrag Tusk is just so much value in one little five mana creature. I love this little guy. Look at him, he's adorable. All right, let's see what the opponent's gonna do. I really wish we had more mana because like heroic intervention would be fantastic just in general to be able to leave up uh even veil of summer would be quite good <laughs> okay uh don't like that um hmm i guess we still can kill so that's actually fine it's not good but it's fine tormod script okay uh they might just go ahead and sack that now Looks like not. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so. Um, first things first, we're just gonna attack them with the Thrag Test token. See what happens. If they block, great. If they don't, fine. Okay. None of this is bothering me at all. This is fine. We're forcing them to use the mana now. Totally cool. That doesn't matter at all. I was gonna die anyway. Oh, I should've died. Oh, that was a mistake. Oh, that's fine. They draw two cards. That's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. All right, let's do this. It's gonna kill the Lily. Really should've done that first. So I was trying to get little bit of damage in if we could but looks like that wasn't gonna happen let's go ahead and foretell the quake br uh, bringer just so we can cheapen that up if we need to um, we could have left a bone crusher giant but I think realistically at this point in the game that's not gonna be the biggest play <laughs> uh, I mean maybe I'm wrong I don't know but it doesn't seem like that's gonna be the biggest thing there's the Golos all right I mean, we knew it was going to come, so that's fine. Uh, yep. We've got, what, two mana left open, so chances are they don't have very much at this point. Hmm. I'm 
I kind of like this play. We're going to do this. We need lands, like, bad. So I'm dropping the Cavalier of Flame here, hoping it doesn't get countered. Um, although I guess if, yeah, we do have the Veil of Summer to protect, so that's kind of nice. All right. Now the question is, what do we pitch? I think definitely Bone Crusher. Probably Heroic Intervention. We'll just strip, uh, throw two back. Okay. A land is something. Um, I was kind of hoping for a red land, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. All right. Let's see what happens. Hmm. What an interesting game this has turned out to be. I really, really wish we could do something about this, but we can't. Now I feel really dumb for throwing Heroic Intervention back. Ugh. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and activate this just to draw a card. I was thinking we they probably would have more like sweepers and stuff, so I wasn't really worried about the Heroic Intervention, and here we are, so. Um, it is what it is. Or Planeswalkers, like those kinds of deals. Okay, uh, that was like the worst Golos flip they could have had. <laughs> These two cards are completely useless. <laughs> cool, I'm into that. I'll take it. Um, ooh, okay, um, yeah. It's actually pretty useful. Okay, so we dropped Terror. This could be very good for us, depending on what they have in their hand. They do have four cards in hand, so we do have to be a bit cautious of that. But we do have Veil of Summer left up as well, so we'll see. Oh, wow. Wow, okay. Fair enough, you got it. Um, that was just a counter, a counter, counter after counter. Uh, that's actually okay then, because as much as that kind of sucks, we really only lost a Terror of the Peaks, which is a good card, but not, not as stressful as it could have been. Okay. We also burned a couple counters from their hand, uh, which is quite good. And it looks like they're only using it to scry here, which is good because they have Golos, but we'll see. One top, one bottom. That's scary. They topped a card. Anytime you top a card in a Golos deck, it's scary, so. Although I guess they drew it, so. Yeah. Land, Prismari Command, and Mana Geode. Okay. Not that terrifying. I'm cool with that. I'm very cool with that. Uh, they're kind of getting bad flips off of the Golos. The first one was by far the scariest uh, with a Lily. That was terrifying, but. Okay. Good thing we have mostly creature spells in our deck. Uh, I mean, I guess they want to play this. They could force us to crack the Mind Stone if they wanted. Um, but that's not really that good. I think they just deal. Okay. Like I said, don't really think that's good. We just draw a card. <laughs> um, yeah. That's pretty interesting. Hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. Just super powerful. Non-creature spells your opponent casts with four. Okay. So that's not that. That's interesting. Okay, cool. Well, let's see what happens. I think we definitely drop the Rhythm and then probably just Elder Gargaroth and uh, get in for a good solid attack. Land is helpful. Uh, it does come into play tapped, thanks to this stupid thing. Snow lands your opponent. Ugh, I hate that. Alright, um, let's drop Quakebringer. I miscounted, but that's okay, we've still got Quakebringer, so. They can't counter this, which is helpful. Um, I'm just gonna give it haste. And we're gonna attack. Uh, curious to see if they block or not. Kind of doubt it. Cool. 
All right, well, here we go. Let's see what happens. Uh, this is such an interesting game. <laughs> this is a long game too. We're at almost 40 minutes. Both to the bottom, okay. I kind of don't want them to play the memory. Uh, although it, I guess it's not the end of the world because we theoretically would just draw more creatures most likely, so it's not good for us, but it's not the worst either. All right, Narset, uh, Duress, ooh, and Nicol Bolas, okay. Keep in mind, they can activate all of these twice because of, well, they miss, uh, no, I guess, no, that's a creature still. Yeah, so they can activate these twice. They can just get our hand completely out of there. Um, that's scary. This is really scary. <laughs> okay. Ugh. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Uh, yeah. Seven inch target opponent, creature and opponent controls, or planeswalker and opponent controls. That's so scary. Yeah. Oh, gah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, we're so dead. <laughs> we are so dead. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, here we go. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter which. They're gonna get rid of our entire hand here, so it really doesn't matter which. Man. We were doing pretty well. But I think this sealed the deal. I think they're going to win it. Uh, we have to get real lucky with something on top. Okay, they just got two lands. That is fine. Oh, and the Quakebringer. Ugh, forgot about that. Um, all right. Do they also get... They get Clothis too, I guess, don't they? Yeah. All right. Well, here's to hoping. <laughs> they can just play go blank and get rid of the Elder, Elder Gargaroth, and then we're just top decking. Oh, they're just going to do this. Wow. So we only get to draw one card because of the Narset, so that memory really was solid for them. Um, we'll scry. I'm going to leave that on top because they have this. Um... We can't even play that. <laughs> hmm. Trying to think what's the... What's the pick the world tree? I don't know, man. At this point, I don't think it really matters. <laughs> I think we're pretty dead. Yeah, we got a troll. <laughs> yep. Um. <laughs> oh, do we just give up? I think we just give up. Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna. There's no hope, guys. Let's uh, let's go ahead and concede. This has been a long video, so let's go ahead. And let's uh, let's chat for just a second. All right, guys. Well, first and foremost, it's great to be back giving you guys some gameplay. Hopefully we can do this on a daily basis like we were previous, uh, previously, and hopefully we can jump more into Historic Brawl or just Standard Brawl, really. I mean, we've got some options there. There's even Alchemy that we can jump into. There's a lot of formats that we need to explore, uh, and so hopefully we can get a chance to do all that. But regardless, this was fun. We went two and one, uh, which is pretty good, and we were pretty close on that third game, so I was actually pretty happy with that. Uh, I do apologize for the client issues. I'm not really sure what happened there, but again guys it's great to be back thank you guys so much for watching do make sure you enter the giveaway if you're not already subscribed that's all you got to do to enter uh and there's more you can do as well so please do uh check out that video but i hope you all had a fantastic holiday i love you guys it's great to be here 
I will see you very soon. Don't worry, we'll be back. <laughs>